On the second chapter of this course, we will focus on the C Sharp scripting component of Grasshopper, which we can find on the math tab, right here. And now to access the code editor, we have to make double click into this component. And here we are. Okay, so first of all, this run script is like our main subroutine before. So this is how, where we have to write our main code. And you can see that this is inside of this class script instance. So we are seeing some object oriented programming right now. And we can use this space here in order to write additional code such as uh, classes, functions, and so on. And we have some space here as well in order to import some other libraries we might want to. Okay, so now let's, let's exit this interface for now and let's take a closer look into this component. And we can see that we have our input parameters and output output parameters as in any other Grasshopper component. But if we take a closer look, we can see that we can expand and contract our parameters here. And not only that, but if we make the right click in uh, over them, we can first of all select whether our input parameter is an item, a list, or a tree. And not only that, but we can also specify which data type we are going to use for this input parameter. So now I think it will be really interesting if we can make a quick example with this component. So for that, I will basically define a, a really simple loop inside of this component. So let's uh, define a modifier first. It would be a really big number like 10 millions. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now these are input parameters. So this is an integer. Perfect. And let's call this count. So I usually start my the names of my input parameters with the letter i from input, which makes my, my code, uh, I think, more easy to understand. So let's define our loop here now. Uh, this is my auxiliary variable. And now we have to define the, our loop. And as in Visual Studio, we can press the tab key twice. And we can see that our loop structure is completed. And this is going to run until uh, the counter is reached. And it's time we want to increase the, um, the value of x in one unit, like that. And uh, as output, we can see that we have uh, two different parameters as the output of this component. First of all, a, this is the object a, which we can assign inside of this main method. And we have also this out parameter here. And in order to up output values here, we have to use an auxiliary function that we can find right here, which is the print function, and which of course belongs to our um, class script instance. So you can read the description that with this function, we are printed, uh, printing a formatted string to the out parameter of the script component. So in this case, oops, in this case, we are going to print the value of x. Okay, so let me try this. I knew it. So I'm getting an error because we have to turn, I think, we have to turn x into a string with this method, for instance. Okay, much better. So now we can see that that's right. The output parameter in this case is the value of x at the end of the loop, which is no other than the counter here. Okay, but we are not done yet, because in order to make this example more interesting, I think that we can make a comparison between the C Sharp scripting component and the other scripting components of Grasshopper, which are Visual Basic, sorry for that, and Python. So basically what we are going to do is that we are going to define the same function, the same uh, subroutine, let's say, inside of the other components, and we are going to compare the execution time. So in order to check the execution time, we have to activate our profiler here. So you can see that it took like uh, 300 milliseconds for this, comp for this CSR component to run, but we are going to see right now that this is a bit tricky. So it's not exactly 
um, this amount of time. But let's define our uh, subroutine in Visual Basic first. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So we can see that it takes like more or less the same amount of time for both components to run, like 300 or 400 milliseconds. But this is tricky because let me run these components again. I'm going to use right click and recompute for that. And now we can see that the execution time is significantly lower. And what's the reason for that? So it's almost the same, but the reason for that is that the first time that we execute our scripting components of C Sharp or Visual Basic, the Grasshopper needs to compile our code before it can actually run it. So the first time it takes a bit more time to execute because um, there is necessity of compiling the code, but later on the code is already compiled, so it just needs to pass the new values into the code and get the result. So now you can see, so for instance, I'm going to do it again. So if I change the code, let's say that this is now one. Uh, Grasshopper will need to compile this first. And you can see that the execution time is now significantly higher than before. But let's get back to zero. And uh, yes, so now we are in 24 milliseconds and 19 milliseconds, which is almost the same. And now let's define the same subroutine inside of Python. Okay, perfect. So now we can see that the output is basically the same. For some reason, this is... So, yes, yeah, so we can see that the output is basically the same. So this, the, the subroutine is the same, but Python requires a much higher execution time than C Sharp or Visual Basic. So you can see that when it comes to execution time to performance, C Sharp is uh, quite a, a really interesting option to choose between all available programming languages inside of Grasshopper.